What's going on Freight Skills? Welcome to another video. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a really hot topic, especially with all the talks about recessions and just general financial struggles that people are facing. We're gonna talk about factoring. Most importantly, how that factoring incorporates into your business. Is it the right choice for you? What is it? what to look for with a factoring company. We're gonna answer all of those questions so that you leave this video with a full understanding and decision on whether factoring is right for you. Because sometimes what you may not know is that even if you have the funds to keep yourself sustained as a freight broker, you might not want to go that route regardless. All right, so we're gonna cover why, what that means, all of that good stuff. But before we get into it, make sure you are subscribed to the Freight Skills channel so that you don't miss any of the important freight broker, carrier, dispatcher updates that we publish on this channel. I don't want you to miss out on all of the latest information. All of the information that I put on this channel has to do with things currently working in the freight broker market. That means 2023, not back in 1999 when I sold my business, not in the early 2000s before computers were such a big thing, right? Everything that I talk about is 2023 and beyond because that is where we're operating. All right, let's get into freight factoring. What is freight factoring, right? We have to have a foundational understanding on what it actually is to understand whether we need it or not. Okay, so freight factoring, all it is, is when you don't have significant capital to fund the operations of your business, in this case, it would be carrier bills, what you do is you have the ability to contract with a freight factoring company. The freight factoring company is a sort of financial institution and what they do is they make a deal with you and they say, all right, broker A, I would like to buy your invoices from you at a one to 3% discount. I'm not sure what the rates are. I don't personally factor. A lot of my students do, but that you'll have a better grip on what it is in the market right now. So the freight factoring company will buy those invoices from you. And now notice, you gave them a 1% to 3% discount on those invoices. So that means that you're going to receive 1% to 3% less than your original deal. So if you made a deal with your customer for $100 and you sold that invoice for a 3% discount to your freight factoring company, you will receive $97 back from your factoring company. But what that fee goes to cover is the factoring company's management financing and collection costs, okay? And that's what freight factoring is in its simplest terms. It's selling your invoices to another party for a discount. You can freight factor with your uncle your, or your wealthy family or your wealthy friend, whoever you wanna do it with. You can sell your invoices at a discount, but the caveat is that person or that entity will be responsible for collecting the funds on your behalf. All right, that's freight factoring. That's all it is. It's taking the money that was owed to you, giving the obligation to somebody else in return for faster payment. And that's one of the reasons why so many carriers and brokers today are using freight factoring because it eliminates the time lapse between doing a load and getting paid. Right now shippers are paying between 30 to 90 days. So if you don't have the capital to fund your operations for 30 to 90 days, freight factoring is an attractive option for you. All right. So that's what it is. Now we understand what it is. Now let's talk about, do you need it as a broker? If you think you're a candidate for freight factoring or you think you're not a candidate for freight factoring, there are a few aspects that you need to examine, self-examine. Number one, do you have the ability to finance carrier jobs up front? So that means, do you have between 30,000 and $50,000 sitting in the bank that you don't need to touch in order to sustain your life? That's a factor that not a lot of people look at. They don't look, they look at, you know, just one big number and they say, oh, I have 50 grand in the bank, I could finance my operations. Well, can you finance your operations, pay yourself a salary, pay your bills, and live a life that you've been living? Because that's important. If the answer to that is no, you do not need to look any further. You need to get free factor. That's the only way to make this work. I'm gonna explain why even having the money might still be a reason for you to go for faith factoring, but we'll get right into that. So that's the number one thing you look at. Do I have the money and can I let that money go and it won't affect my life at all? Because it's gonna take you between 
30 and 90 days to collect money from your customers after you pay your carriers. You can see how the cash flows will not add up, okay? The second thing that you need to look at is, if a customer does not pay me and I pay my carrier, will I go bankrupt fast? What you have to understand is that as a broker, you are in the riskiest position throughout the transaction. Carriers are protected under federal law, the CFR, to get paid from somebody, right? And usually what happens is if a broker doesn't pay a carrier, they have the right to collect from the shipper, consignee, or parties listed on the bill of lading, right? Because So they have recourse. Brokers, on the other hand, do not have as much recourse because the law is not clear cut for them. That means that if something happens through the course of a shipment, and for whatever reason, a shipper, constantly, or your customer is not happy, and they decide not to pay you the bill, you are still obligated to pay your carriers. And unless you have a big legal budget to go collect that money, or a good relationship with a collections agency willing to give 10 to 50% of your invoices, then you are not in a place to spend your own money because you always have to assume that you're not going to get the money back. Even in my brokerage today, every single load that we do, I'm assuming that I'm not gonna be able to collect that money. So I'm looking at a load from a risk management perspective and I'm saying, if we don't get paid on this load, are we gonna go bankrupt? If we don't get paid on these 10 loads, are we gonna go bankrupt? And if the answer is yes, then we don't do the loads. You have to look at the risk versus reward and everything that you look at has to be from the worst case scenario. That's the way that you stay protected. And it might sound like a little bit like a hypochondriac, always thinking they need to go to the doctor because they have the worst possible case of a disease or a sickness or an illness. But you have to look at your business health from that perspective in order to sustain yourself over the long run, right? And it's really stressful, believe me. Every time we get a load, I'm looking at it like, Oh, are we gonna get paid for this load? Uh, what if something goes wrong? And that attention to those risks helps me manage my risk better as a collective company, and it helps me pay more attention to all the details so that it doesn't happen, all right? You have to evaluate yourself from not only a financial health perspective, but a risk management perspective. Can you risk not getting paid? And if you can, do you have the legal budget to go collect? the money that's rightfully owed to you. If the answer to either one of those is no, I suggest you look at freight factoring. Now freight factoring, the reason why, even if you have money, you might wanna go into freight factoring is because factoring companies have a much bigger legal budget than you. So here's the benefits that you get when you factor. Credit checks. Your factoring company will credit check your customers for you. So you don't have to spend money on expensive software, you don't need to use your judgment, of which you might not have like adequate judgment experience yet. Like I could look at a credit portfolio of a customer and say, oh, this person is trustworthy, this person's not trustworthy. But that comes over 10 to 15 years of experience, right? So your factoring company handles your credit checks. Your factoring company helps you make educated risk management decisions. They'll go to you and they'll say, hey, broker A, uh, we looked at your customer that you sent over, we'll approve them up to $20,000 in credit. That's how much we're willing to risk for this prospective customer. That really helps you because now you know you can do up to $20,000 essentially risk-free. Because I'll tell you what, the people doing the analysis at your freight factoring company are a lot more experienced than you running these loads, right? You're good at trucking, they're good at finance. That's what they do. Let the people who are good at what they do handle that stuff for you. Because all you're doing, if you take on this risk, the risk that the freight factory company takes on for you, is you're adding an additional level of stress to your day, you're adding more responsibilities to your plate, and you're just overall in a worse position because you're trying to insource something that's very easily outsourced for relatively cheap, right? One to 3% is not that much money for the value that they provide to you. If you think, take for example a, a $1,000 load where you're making $100. If you handle that yourself, and you pay the carrier yourself, and you are gonna handle the collection yourself, you are taking on the risk of the full $1,000, and you're never 100% sure that you're gonna get paid. Right? There always might be something, some kind of a deduction, something went wrong, 
Uh, maybe the customer goes out of business shortly after they give you the loan. That's happened to you before. Or you can pay one to three dollars of your profit and your factoring company, or it's either profit or revenue, whatever your agreement is, and your factoring company will take on that risk for you. So even if it's 10 or $30 from that thousand, you're sacrificing a little to save yourself a lot. Okay, you have to think about it from that perspective. And the problem with business owners in general and freight brokers, it applies to everybody across the board, even me sometimes, is you wanna handle everything yourself because you have this obsession with control. You wanna control your money, you wanna control your finances, you wanna be able to say, I'm self-funded. I, I don't need outside funding, but guess what? Even our brokerage, we've been around for 15 years, we have a source of funding. We don't have our own cash sitting in the bank. We use bank loans. We leverage other assets that we've accumulated over the years, and we take loans out against those assets. Now those loans have an interest rate. So even though we're directing the finances of our operation, we're paying the bank whatever it is, I think it's 8.8% .8 now. It's something stupid hot. So it even costs us to self-finance our own operations. We've been doing it long enough that we have a whole department that handles this for us. But if you are relatively on the smaller side or you're just getting going and you don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars sitting in the bank, freight factoring is a no-brainer. It's not even, and, and I'm gonna tell you who I uh, refer all of my students to. Uh, I do have a, uh, an agreement with them in place where if I refer people and they help the people, they, they give me a small commission, that's very minuscule commission, but I don't care who you factor with, all right? I'm just gonna explain why I uh, partnered with the factoring company that I do. But first I wanna explain to you something uh, that's a big concept in factoring and financing, and that's recourse versus non-recourse. So when you are evaluating freight factoring companies to use for your business, if you decide to go that route based off the feedback I just gave you, you're gonna see something called recourse versus non-recourse factoring. There might be like a really complicated explanation, but I'm gonna put it to you in plain terms so that you understand what you're getting yourself into. If a factoring company is recourse, that means that if your customer does not pay the factoring company, even if your factoring company approved them for credit, you will be responsible for the debts that they don't pay. So essentially, you're in the same position as you would be in had you done it yourself, right? So recourse factoring solutions are kind of taking advantage of the brokers who are getting started or maybe they have some momentum, but they don't have any money in the bank. Because the factoring company is basically saying like, okay, yeah, I'll buy your invoices from you. I'll help you out with funding. I'll pay you quickly. But if your customers don't pay you, even if I told you it was okay to run the loads, you're gonna have to pay me back. And they'll just take it right out of your bank account. What you have to understand, again, is just the laws of business. They have much deeper pockets than you. So even if you don't think it's just and fair, they will sue you if they don't get what you agreed with them. So if you agree that it's recourse factoring and that you're gonna be responsible for the debts that your customers don't pay, they will collect on those debts. I promise you that. Or they will bury you in legal fees until they put a lien on your house or your personal assets or whatever assets you own as a business, okay? So that's what you have to watch out for, recourse versus non-recourse. When you find a non-recourse factoring solution, non-recourse means that you're not responsible for the debts that your customers don't pay as long as the factoring company agreed to that term. So how this looks in a practical application, if you have a customer and you say to that customer, or no, and you say to the factoring company, I wanna run $10,000 worth of work for this customer. The factoring company will say, okay, we approved that customer for $10,000. That means that they have accepted the risk, they ran the credit check, they did the research, they'll insure you essentially for that $10,000. They're not gonna make you pay that back because they're knowingly taking that risk. Another instance is they might say, okay, you know, I know you wanna do $10,000 of work for this customer, but we're willing to approve up to five. And the other five is gonna be your risk. That's recourse. 5,000 of that will be our responsibility and obligation. 5,000 is gonna be yours. Sometimes that's a fair agreement, but at least they're transparent. They're not telling you, all right, run the load for 10, and if we get stiffed or they don't pay us, you're gonna owe us the 10. 
the factoring company says, all right, you have 10, $10,000 worth of invoices. We'll buy five of that from you, but the other five you're gonna have to insure yourself because we're a little hesitant on this customer, all right? So that's the difference between recourse and non-recourse. After hearing all of that, the solution that I recommend to my students, my, my mentees, everybody in my Facebook group, my email list, my YouTube channel, is a company called Comfrey. They have a program called Hall Pay. And like I said, I am a partner of them. I've had multiple conversations with reps over there. I've had multiple conversations with the CEO, the partnership department. I've spoken to these people on the phone, on video, I have a personal relationship with them. The reason why I have the personal relationship with them is because when they showed me their service and their product, I loved it. The reason I love it is because it's great for early brokers and younger brokers. They have great rates, rates that I think are fair from my 15 years of experience. They have a great support platform. They do more than they should to help newer and brokers getting going off the ground. They end up answering questions for brokers and that's why we have a partnership because when they have brokers asking them questions on how to do things they send them over to my channel they send them to me and i help them out All right so we have a mutual working partnership i love the rates i love their technology platform i love the support they give to the broker community and i love their transparency their non-recourse that might mean that you don't get as much credit extended with all of your customers, but it does mean that they're transparent in telling you that they'll only insure a customer up to a certain amount. Whether it's 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, that's gonna depend on your customer. All right, but the fact is, if they tell you you're good to go, do the work for this customer, we'll collect. They back that up. That's the difference between Paul Pay versus a lot of the other solutions out there, I'm not gonna name any, and that's why I chose to use them as the example and the company who I trust to handle that stuff for my students, okay? So, if you're interested in Hall Pay, if you're interested in factoring it all for your business, cool thing is, there's a non-obligatory call that you could jump on with their rep, and like, like I said, the rep is a good friend of mine, he will hook you up, he'll answer any questions you have about factoring, credit, financing, all of that good stuff. The link to that is in the description below. So if you think factoring is right for your business, uh, if you want to hear what they have to say, if you want to review their contract and compare it against other factoring companies, link is in the bio below. Uh, it's going to say factoring referral and all you have to do is click that link, fill out the form on that page and my communities manager basically the person who Comfrey dedicates to all of my students to, to give them some little extra special TLC is going to get a notification reach out to you to schedule a consultation right they work very well with new brokers they work well with other brokers who maybe have a bad experience with their factoring company want to jump over to somebody else uh, like I said I love the platform I would use it if I need factoring, but I don't need to. And then I just have to say it because I'm on YouTube that we do have a partnership. I receive a very minuscule, almost negligent uh, commission based off of the success of you with the platform. All right, so it's not gonna affect you at all. It affects Comfrey. It's on them, not on you. So don't think that I'm just sending you over uh, to make a few extra bucks, right? That most of that just goes into developing videos and shooting content for the community. So uh, that's not the intention there. Just have to be upfront about that just so that nobody can tell me that I'm uh, hiding something from you guys. All right. So I hope this answered a lot of your questions about freight factoring. It's been a popular topic lately uh, just because there's a lot of economic uncertainty going through the industry and just the nation as a whole. Hugely and strongly recommend factoring if you're just getting started or if you, like I said, you don't have a bunch of finances sitting in the bank collecting dust, which not a lot of us do, even me. I don't have a bunch of money sitting there that I'd be willing to front for 90 days to make maybe a 10 to 15% return, uh, maybe, right? Because again, our average profit margin, 10 to 15%, maybe 20 if we're lucky. That's my spiel about factoring. 
I hope it helped you understand the process a little bit more. Hope to help shed some clarity about this. If you wanna get in touch with me or HallPay, like I said, the link is right down below. It says factoring referral, just click that. It'll take you to a page, fill out your information, and then you'll be able to book a call with Hall Pay, and they'll let you know like how the program works, send you the contract, answer any questions you have. Now before I go, in addition to that, if you want some more help with brokering, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure also down below you join my free Facebook group if you haven't already. That's where I hang out all day. I even have some Comfrey reps in there that answer questions about credit, paying carriers, getting paid from customers. All right, so full broker resources for free are right down below in the free group. Just click that link. I'll send you a personalized invitation and I will accept your invitation to join the group and you'll have a great time in that community. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and until the next one, I will talk to you soon.